Audi. I'm going to the used bookstore. I cleaned out my bookshelves and I have a stack of books that I'm getting rid of. I'm actually really proud of myself because I feel like I really struggle with like letting go of books and objects and things just in general. My bookshelves are getting full. I have two bookshelves, one for my read books, one for my unread books, and <sighs> space is getting tight. I'm gonna see if I can pick up the stack without dropping them. <laughs> Half price books is probably gonna give me a nickel for all of these because that's just how it is, but it's fine. I just wanted to show you guys real quick what I'm getting rid of. I'm not gonna like go into detail. I am getting rid of five New York Review Books editions. The only one that I've read is The Mirador. Um, I read this last year and it was fine. It's about Irene Nemirovsky. Um, but it's written by her daughter. I haven't read any of Irene's other books. I know she has some pretty famous ones, but this one just didn't really have a lot of staying power for me. I also have English August, an Indian story. I have not read this one yet. The Post Office Girl, also have not read this one. Castle Gripsum, I think. Haven't read this one either. And The Memoirs of Two Young Wives. Haven't read this one either. I was really in the habit of just picking these up at half price books whenever I would come across one without really caring about what the story was about. But a lot of these are very like historical, which isn't always my jam. I'm not into like a wartime story. <laughs> and that's what I find a lot of those are about, even though they're very beautiful and I love having them on my shelves. I have a lot on my shelves still that I am actually interested in reading. I've also got a couple classics here that I have not read either. We have The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This like tiny paper or hardcover <laughs> edition of Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This book is like I, I don't think that I would have like a good time physically reading this, so we're we're gonna we're gonna get rid of it. It's just too tiny for a hardcover book. I feel like it won't be comfortable to hold. And I also have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I'm not a huge classics girl, and I figure those three, if I do feel the urge to read them, I think that they'll be very easy to find used again or to just get from the library or something like that. All right, we'll finish talking about the rest of the ones that I haven't read and then I am getting rid of a handful of ones that I have read. We have The Living Sea of Waking Dreams. Someone gave this to me randomly and they didn't like it and I'm just not, I'm not itching to get to it. We also have Wintering, which is about Sylvia Plath, which I am very interested in reading about her and her life, but this is a novel, so it's a fictionalized version of her life, and I feel like we have, you know, her journals and like other nonfiction sources about her that I think I would rather read those than a fictionalized version. I have Marguerite Duras, The War, which is a memoir. Like I said, World War II is not my... <laughs> It's not my favorite topic to read about. It's it's important and, you know, obviously a major historical thing, but in my pleasure reading, it's just not something that I'm super keen to explore right now. I just read Simone de Beauvoir's The Prime of Life, which most of that book was about World War II. And this, I think, is going to be like a very similar thing writer in Paris during the war. I've read The Easy Life by her too and I feel like I didn't love the writing enough to make me want to read her talking about World War II. <laughs> so goodbye to that as well. Bodily Harm by Margaret Atwood. I read a poem 
by Margaret Atwood for my senior project in high school. This is so funny to me, but just like side note, I was in AP English in high school and our senior year, if you were in like the regular non-AP English class, your like senior project and paper that you had to do, you had to like job shadow someone that was in a profession that you thought you might want to go into, which I think is helpful <laughs> and good <laughs> and makes sense for a senior project. But for AP English, I think we were assigned a like literary era and then we had to choose some sort of theme and you had to read like a novel, a nonfiction, and I think like a poem and come up with like a whole report and presentation on that. And my era was postmodernism and the theme that I chose was like feminism and motherhood, which <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like it was such a foreshadowing of my taste now, but <laughs> I read for that project a Margaret Atwood poem. I think it's called like Come Back Mom or something like that. I've never read any of her fiction. I don't know. She just doesn't, she doesn't speak to me. She doesn't call to me. I don't feel super intrigued by like her more popular, like well-known book. So we're just gonna get rid of it. The Net and Yahoo's by Joshua Cohen. I feel like it's gonna be over my head. <laughs> I know that it won or was nominated for something. I don't keep up. I don't keep up with the prizes and the lists and the things like that. Like that does not matter to me. <laughs> Just being honest, I know that this was this was on some sort of list or won some sort of prize, but yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a bit too big brain for me and it's just not speaking to me at the moment. And then the last book that was on my TBR shelf that I'm getting rid of is A Fresh Complaint by Jeffrey Eugenides. I read The Virgin Suicides and loved that. I read The Marriage Plot and thought that it was fine. I have Middlesex on my TBR shelf. I've had it on there for a very long time. Haven't been compelled to pick it up, but I'm gonna keep it since it's a novel. These are short stories, which I historically am not really into. I do really love this book cover though. This is one that I should have put in my judge a book by its cover tag. It's got um, this graphic printed on the hard cover and then you can see it through those clear circles. We've got some books that I've read that I'm gonna get rid of, which I have a tougher time with that than with the books that I haven't read because I feel like they're almost like little trophies to have on my shelf that like I read this, I did it, but the red shelf is getting full too so we have to we have to make decisions here. I'm getting rid of The Appointment by Katharina Volkmer. I read this in 2022 and I, I really don't know what happened in this. I was really excited for it because I had read one of her stories in Astra Magazine and I loved it. And I was like, let me pick up this little novel by her, but it was not, it was not what I was, was wanting. I've also got Three Rooms by Joe Hamia. I read this over the summer and I feel like the description of it is like definitely something that I should be into, but the execution of it just didn't match up to what I wanted it to be. It's kind of riffing off of um, A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, and it takes you through three different rooms that the main character lived in. It talks a lot about like class and property ownership and things like that in Britain, and it just didn't land for me. We're getting rid of... <laughs> Delta of Venus by Anais Nin. I picked this up because I'm interested in her work. I have the first volume of her diaries that I have been meaning to get to, but I haven't. But this is erotica, um, which is not a genre that I typically go for. And this did not change my mind on that. I, I read it. I don't think that I rated it because it felt weird to do that. And yeah, I just... I don't think that I need this. I don't think that I'll revisit it, but we tried it. <laughs> We're also getting rid of I Love You But I've Chosen Darkness by Claire Bay Watkins. This one was like fine for me. 
and I've held on to it for a really long time but I remember like I think I read this early 2022 and I remember shortly after reading it feeling like I could get rid of this <laughs> but I've kept it. It wasn't bad but it also was not my favorite and it's taken up shelf space and I feel like I feel like it's time to to let go of it. The last book that I'm getting rid of <laughs> is The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. You guys, this book, I literally, this was such a disappointment for me. I, I don't have the, the words to, to describe the frustration that I felt reading this. I read it over the summer and I was really excited about it because I feel like I've heard good things about it and I, I don't know anything about what happened in this. There's a lot of other languages, there's a lot of like Greek and Japanese which like I I literally don't even know how to talk about this <laughs> um but there's like there's pages and pages of other languages without any translation there's like mathematical sequences there's just so much in here that did not it just confused me it didn't contribute to my understanding of anything <laughs> and it was just really confusing and I I sat through all like 500 pages of it and I got to the end of it and I was like you have got to be kidding me like none of that made sense you know I was hoping that there would be like a point where it clicked and it just it didn't it's about uh, a kid that doesn't know he's very incredibly smart which is why there is so much content in here that I did not understand he's incredibly smart he doesn't know who his father is and his mother won't tell him so he kind of goes on a journey that I guess mirrors the movie Seven Samurai. He kind of goes and like interacts with seven different men that he thinks could potentially be his father. I guess he learns some lessons along the way from them. <laughs> I literally like I can't I can't with this book. Um, <laughs> I usually don't feel so negatively and like strongly about books like I feel like I usually am at least like okay with the books that I choose to read but this one just it was a very frustrating experience and I held on to it because I like I like the cover and I liked seeing it on my shelf and knowing that I did read it but no more no more it's leaving I think I might need two tote bags to put all of these in so that'll be fun um I'll let you guys know how much money I receive for these <laughs> do you guys think that the good kind people at half price books are gonna be happy to see me or are they gonna tell me to get out <laughs> be honest Claire also has a similarly sized bag full of books for them to go through so yay I have acquired some books. Is anybody surprised? Probably not. Me and Claire went to three bookstores yesterday. We wanted to go to two that we had never been to before, but it started dumping down snow <laughs> and they were a bit farther out of our way. So we didn't really want to risk driving to them in that weather. So we're planning on going back to those, but we did still hit three bookstores so it was a lot of fun got some good stuff I just wanted to talk about what I got I also got a lot of books as Christmas gifts this year which I'm very thankful for so I'll talk about those too but we're just gonna get into it because I said that I wasn't gonna talk about the books that I unhauled which by the way I got $11.25 I think <laughs> from half price books for all of those books so that was a little bit disappointing but luckily I had a gift card and a coupon to use as well so I ended up not having to pay 
or anything that I got at Hat Price Books, but I was shocked at how low that amount was. The first book that I got, I actually got this a couple weeks ago um, during the Barnes and Noble like big sale that they were doing. I went on like the last day of the sale and there were no hardcovers that I wanted. I think they were like half off or something like that. So I ended up getting this instead, which was not on sale, but it is Lies and Sorcery by Elsa Morante. This, I, I think I've heard of this briefly, but what really sold me on this was that Natalia Ginsburg read the manuscript of it in like one sitting or one day or something like that, according to the introduction. So I was sold immediately. Next is a book that I picked up yesterday at a local bookstore called Completely Booked, and it is The Young Man by Annie Arnault. I'm trying to be an Arnault completionist, and this was one of the ones that I didn't have yet. I think it's a relatively recent release from her, so yeah, super tiny. Very excited to have this. Then we've got a Half Price Books pickup. It is Checkout 19 by Claire Louise Bennett. I paid $13.99 for this because I'm pretty sure it is a like UK edition. I read this I think really early in 2023. I had borrowed it from the library. I didn't love it at the time but I have read Pond since also by Claire Louise Bennett and I really enjoyed that one so I couldn't pass this one up. It's one that I want to revisit. I just feel like I wasn't far enough along in <laughs> my reading journey whenever I tried this initially to like fully grasp it so I'm gonna try it again and I mean this cover is stunning so. Another Half Price Books purchase is Essayism by Brian Dillon. This was $8.99. It does have- I threw it on the floor. Um, <laughs> it does have some like highlights and stuff in it but uh, this one's been one that's on my radar for a little while. As we know, I love essays, so I'm really curious to kind of read more about the craft of them. And then for $6.99 at Half Price Books, I picked up the complete novels of Jean Reese. I wanted to read Wide Saragasso Sea and Good Morning Midnight, I think, are the two that I've heard about. I've seen a couple different copies of Wide Sargasso Sea at Half Price Books, and there were some there yesterday, and they were all ugly covers and they were the same price as this which has all five of her novels in it so this was the obvious choice <laughs> to to go with and then we did some shopping at white whale bookstore in pittsburgh on friday night whenever we went for the michael cunningham event where he spoke about his new novel day so i did get that with my ticket to the event. It was a super cool uh, little event. He even signed it for me and he also signed my copy of um, The Hours and Mrs. Dalloway. But I thought it was really funny. He put the wrong date on it. <laughs> and he put it on Claire's too. Um, he put December 5th, 2024. So he is a time traveler. Super cool to have this and have it signed by him and I'm excited to get to it. I've seen a couple people on Instagram that have been reading it recently so yeah. Another book that I picked up from White Whale on Friday is Bonsai by Alejandro Zambra. I saw Cat's Field Notes talking about- that sounds so weird to refer to her <laughs> as the full channel. Um, I saw Cat from Cat's Field Notes talking about this in a recent video and it really piqued my interest in it. It's a little tiny one. I actually might pick this up today while I wait for my soup to cook <laughs> that I'm gonna be making soon. Yeah, I'm just super intrigued by this. I haven't read anything by Zombra before and the way that Kat was talking about it really made me want to pick it up. So I was glad that White Whale had it. Also from White Whale, I got My Death by Lisa Tuttle. I found out about this from Renee at The Left Handed Reader. So yeah, she was raving about it in a recent video and I love an NYRB, or as me and Claire like to call them, NURBS. <laughs> so I was really excited that they had this as well. I went, I went really hard at White Whale, you guys. Oh my goodness. The next one that I picked up there is Three Strong Women by Marie Ndiaye. I recently read her novel My Heart Hemmed In 
and they actually had a couple of her books there. This was the only one though that was not available on Scribd that they had for sale, so sticking to my goals in my resolutions, I decided to pick this one up since I can read the other ones digitally. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to more of her work in 2024, so I was really glad to see that they had her there because I feel like she is not talked about enough and is really underrated. The next white whale purchase that I have is Alien Daughters Walk Into the Sun, an Almanac of Extreme Girlhood by Jackie Wang. I freaking love this cover. So gorgeous, so beautiful. I think I might have added this to my want to read shelf on Goodreads. I think that someone that I'm friends with on there had added it and it looked interesting to me. So I think that I've, I think that that's where I had seen this before. I don't know much about it. I haven't really seen anything about it, but it sounded really interesting from the back. It says compiled as a field guide, travelogue, essay collection, and weather report. It, it traces Jackie Wang's life, so I just thought that that combination of all of those different forms and formats was very intriguing. Um, it's a thick one, so I don't know. I, I feel like I want to pick this up soon just because I'm very, I'm very intrigued by it. The last book that I purchased from White Whale and that I purchased in general from this haul is They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us by Hanif Abdurraqib. I have talked at length about this in all of my recent videos, but I had read it on my e-reader from Libby and did not have a physical copy of it. So picked this up. It's signed by him, which is super cool. It's got like a little sticker with his signature on it. So we love that. And it says that this is the expanded paperback edition. Oh, Cool, so it has three additional essays by Hanif and then an afterword by Jason Reynolds. So yeah, whenever I go through to transfer any like highlights and stuff that I did on Libby into this, I'll have to remember to go in and read those extra essays in that afterward. That's cool, I didn't realize that. Okay, moving on to the gifts that I very kindly have received from my friends and family. Claire got me A Breath of Life by Clarice Lispector for Christmas. I am so excited about this. I now have all four of the New Directions editions that like create the picture of her face on the front and on the back. And I'm really excited to read this just in general. I think Biblio Sophie has talked a lot about how this is like one of, if not her favorite books from Clarice. So yeah, super excited to have this. It's been the one that I've not been able to find out in person. So really excited to kind of complete that little collection. Claire also got me a copy of Where Are Your Boys Tonight by Chris Payne, the oral history of Emo's mainstream explosion 1999 to 2008. I read this last year. I had borrowed Claire's copy of it because we both love this genre of music. So I was like, if you're gonna get me anything at all, <laughs> this is this could be it. This is all that I need. So I am very excited to probably eventually revisit this. Claire had so many like sticky tabs and stuff in her copy and I feel like I need to do the same. It would probably just be any mention of Pete Wentz or Haley Williams and there are a lot of them. So my parents also got me some books for Christmas. I had asked them for two of these and both of them are books that I've already read and talked about in other videos. So one of them is Indelicacy by Amina Kane. I had read this, I don't know if it was on Scribd or on Libby, but it was a five star read for me and I didn't have a copy of it. And then same thing with Sympathy by Olivia Sajik. This was a Scribd read and it was also five stars. So I wanted to kind of round out my, my bookshelf with those. And then this made me laugh. <laughs> really hard whenever I opened it because I did not like mention wanting this to them or anything but my dad's big brain he thought of it and I just I died whenever I pulled it out of my stocking <laughs> they got me the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins which is the prequel to the Hunger Games I just borrowed my friend Lily's copies of the original trilogy and me and my friends had all seen the movie but I didn't have this so my dad thought to get it for me, which I really appreciate. I thought that that was really sweet. We're winding down here. Me and my friends do a secret Santa for our Christmas party. And my friend Lily had me and she got me a bunch of books. 
So she got me this copy of Spring by Ally Smith. This is the one book in the seasonal quartet that I simply could not find <laughs> at the bookstore. I was able to find Autumn, Winter, and Summer. And yeah, so I wanted to have the complete set. This is also my favorite of those four books. It does not match my other ones, which I was like, don't even worry about it because I like this one better. <laughs> than the ones that I have. I think that this is such a gorgeous edition. It has like the half dust jacket here and then the title and the author are printed onto the hardcover. So I was like, this is special. It was a gift. It is my favorite book of the quartet. So I feel like it stands out. It's gorgeous. I love it. I'm excited to have it. She got me a copy of Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. This was a five-star read. This is my favorite Levy that I've read so far. So I needed to have a copy of it on my shelves, obviously. And then she went rogue, which I love. I appreciate. She scrolled down to the very bottom of my Goodreads want to read shelf. And she saw that I had Burnt Sugar by Avni Doshi on my shelf from years and years and years ago. I kind of forgot about this book, but yeah, she went all the way back <laughs> in time to find it. Curious to see if my taste matches up with what it was whenever I was first getting back into reading and like adding stuff to my want to read list. So yeah, this will be a fun little experiment. This was actually a like blind date with a book from the store and her and my friend Jen were out shopping together and they saw the description on it. I can't remember what the um like the adjectives that they used were. I'll put them in here if I have like a picture of it from before I opened it, but yeah, they saw the description on the blind date with the book wrapping and they were like, that is a cast book. So they got it for me. It's Picking Cotton, Our Memoir of Injustice and Redemption by Jennifer Thompson Canino and Ronald Cotton. This is a really interesting one. I've never heard of it. Basically, the premise of this is that Jennifer was raped by someone that broke into her apartment and she identified Ronald as her attacker and ended up getting him put in jail because of that, even though he maintained that he was innocent. And finally, after 11 years in jail, Ronald took a DNA test that proved his innocence. So he was jailed for a crime that he never committed. And then two years later, they met face to face and ended up, I guess, becoming friends. And they wrote this book together, uh, talking about that whole situation so yeah i don't know my friend said that they had i think heard about this like in the news or something but i didn't know about it so i'm very curious about this okay those are all the books tried to keep things reined in and not go too crazy obviously a lot of them were gifts and then like white whale has a really great like reward system so i think i had like 11 bucks off so you know i tried to save money where I could. Me and Claire love to go and do this little bookstore tour every so often. I've been really good about like not buying books willy-nilly for myself so I figured I would treat myself a little bit. Now I need to put them on my shelves <laughs> which hopefully there's enough room. We'll see.